since we have a quorum, I, I do expect uh, possibly a few others to show up, but since we have a quorum, hold on, I want to see schools. Like a freshman college. Like I'm getting some stuff. Is Louie coming? Is Louie coming? He might come in. He might be here real quickly. That's what I want to start. I don't know. Yeah, I actually think this might be a fairly fast meeting. Um, oops, I don't know if get any place from the plate. Um, so, can we have someone who takes the views to be a scribe? And I will say one more time that um, well, a couple of meetings ago, we did have it noted that uh, uh, recently there have only been women have been scribed. Recently? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I will ask, does anybody want to be a scribe? I'm happy to do it starting at 4.15 or <laughs> his mom's coming. I could hold a baby. <laughs> Too risky. <laughs> <laughs> but I will take over. Okay, Christine, Christine's got it. Um, all right. Um, so I would accept a motion to approve the minutes of July 21st, 2016. To approve. Okay, we've got seconds. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we're going back here. Um, okay, so report on personnel streetlights. Um, so I have been working, just to let everybody know that I, I have been working with the DPW um, uh, to try to identify which streetlights um, uh, look really close to a house, basically. You know, cases where we, particularly places where we have narrow streets and houses right up against the street, and a street light right outside the door, um, stuff like that. So um, it's a really complicated thing. It's been taking Andy's key for a while. Andy's actually out now with an eye injury, but um, someone else is, um, um, uh, Karen, someone I don't know. Is Karen it? Nelson. Karen Nelson is, is uh, trying, and it looks like that we actually may be starting to get somewhere, so hope this will happen. Um, other, other news for uh, the street lights, is um, we've received a uh, draft change order from Siemens as we've described, you know, the changes that we wanted. So we are really close to signing that. And as soon as that gets signed, um, hopefully it will happen next week. There actually were a few typos that I found that need some clarification, but uh, uh, hopefully that will be signed next week and um, uh, they will be ordering parts. Um, uh, so they will be ordering materials. And then uh, installation will start about six weeks after the order of materials. Uh, that's an update on, on that. And, and then, of course, um, we do expect we might still get some people who say they, they have nuisance light trespass and that uh, we will we'll probably miss some shields um, in this process. But uh, um, we should get a good, um, a good bulk of what we start off with. Um, review the postcard and landing page. So moments before the meeting started, as, as someone anyway who did that, there are saw. Um, Interscore did send out new postcards and a link to a new landing page. I don't, I, I don't know if anybody's had chance to review them yet, but I thought I would bring it here and, and I thought the commission's feedback last time was really good and uh, I think they've addressed most of it. I will give everybody a few moments. Does anybody need a copy to review? This is the landscape, right? This is just the no, that's the postcard. Is last week, right? Can you hold it up? Or has this been updated? Um, there's a few of those around. I have a black and white version. That's been updated. Oh, okay. So, yeah, those are up. Those are good. I have a few to hand around, and I can describe what's on the landing page. I did print the landing page out. So I can describe it. Okay. okay. Um, people want to look at the postcards first? That's what they, they seem to be doing. This is yeah. So the same content, just different? No, actually they changed, the images are the same. I think the content is slightly different. Can we do on one because I have a... I was going to try to get it on this, but it's still good. Oh, I also I have a black and white version. Anybody Chris, the two versions the same except for the picture? Yeah, yeah. Why isn't it an uh, Amazon gift card? It's actually going to be a number, a coupon code. Okay. Oh. Um, okay. So gift 
gift certificates. Nor do they need to be capitalized gift in the car. Yeah. True. Right. And I think it should actually be, I think it's actually Amazon.com is the actual name of the website. Or what would, what's, what's you, what do you think it's actually called? Amazon.com. No, the uh, gift. Oh, it's a, uh, well, gift code. Yeah, um, it's either a coupon code, gift code, a gift card might be the most, but then people might be waiting for actual gift card with a really interesting yeah. email with a, right. Um, so the easiest okay. thing would just be go online and see what they call it, call okay. it that. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask them to check the name. I know, having worked with them before, they're pretty strict. Um, if you're mentioning their product, you have to verify the, the piece with them first. Not that anything will come up, but okay. it might be worth just going through their process. It's easy. Okay. And, and check Amazon's official name. And you might put their logo in the corner of this too. Or under that, maybe just to catch people's eyes. Chris, I know there's a more basic threshold issue. Maybe we discussed before, but there's no way it could be anything other than single family homes. I couldn't do condos or other. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing is just single family homes. And so their address list just would imagine they're only be sending these to single family homes? Yes. Yeah. And it won't be all single family homes. It'll be just a, in a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're sending this out to a thousand, and then whoever responds from that thousand, it's not like they're going to send it out to more and then actually do a thousand. Right. Exactly. Right. They're uh, sending out to a thousand in order to get, you know, as many as possible to check, but they won't be anywhere near a thousand. You know, we expect. What do we expect? Because isn't there something like a ten percent response rate to these kind of things? Two percent. Two percent. <laughs> a two percent uh, response rate, right? Um, and they added JPEG to the to the upload because people, I mean, they're scanning with their phone and like this, and you know that might be. I mean, I know how to make it. Uh, I know how to make a PDF, but um, it's not easy. So I'm not sure what you're saying. Totally. On the upload on the on the landing page where it oh, says I upload. Can right, right, right. Make okay. it with JPEG. PDFs or image of. That would mean like people well, have. They were technical PDF, that's or CSV, or, or JPEG. Oh, that's all I would accept? Is that all the main page accepts? It seems, seems like it, yeah. yeah. I didn't, didn't try it, but. Yeah. Okay, or other formats, um, JPEG. There's something in the language um, that's to analyze single family homes. I, to analyze what? I mean, the outcome that they want is high energy savings potential, but. Are you on the landing page, I think? No, on the postcard. Oh, no, okay, where? Uh, yeah. Northampton's yeah. Energy and Sustainability Commission has engaged a third party firm, Enerscore, to analyze. I mean, I think it should just be in very basic language for people to analyze how much you spend on energy or how, <laughs> some, you know what I mean? Because it's to analyze single-family homes. What is that exactly? Yeah, I agree also because I worry people think we're being misleading because we know they're going to also use the data for their own purposes. And so if we just say it's about to energize savings, then someone might say, oh, we, you didn't tell us they're going to use this for this other thing. If we say tend to analyze energy, then it's fine. And it's, it's out there, and we're not, we're not cheating. All right, to, uh, to, to analyze. Uh, how much energy? For how much your bills are. I mean, something very basic that yeah. people understand. Yeah, I, I, I like what you said before. Is to analyze um, how much energy your how, family how, how, uses. Your how, how much energy uses. you use. How much? And p I think people don't even really understand what that means when you say energy. No. You know, like right. so. Do you want to say to analyze how much electricity and gas you? Use? or, I mean, be just as specific as possible so people understand what this is. I know that okay. sounds nitpicky, but I just no, feel no, like I think these kinds of things can feel really um, off-putting to people, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm sitting here kind of dwelling because I'm just trying to think of how to simplify it. 
Yeah, because um, what they're doing is actually kind of complicated. I, th I think your point is really, really well. It, I think it's an excellent point myself. So. If you're too specific, you have to get very detailed. Because what they're doing is, isn't just looking at bills, they're looking at public data records, they're creating profiles of building types. It's pretty complicated, and it's new, and that's why it's kind of exciting. So if you just say, but they're looking at those records to determine what, and that's what you need to do. So you need to analyze your what energy usage. Energy, yeah. I mean, it's about the potential savings. Is that the end result? Is the the opportunities I mean, for saving? I, I like to Lisa's, Lisa's way of saying it because it was like how much, um, how much you spend on energy. <laughs> you know, it kind of gets to what, you know, uh, we're just saying how much does your how much. Uh, energy does your home use? Eh, I don't really care. How much I spend on energy? I, I care about that. You know, <laughs> so I, I kind of like that, but I'm not sure if it's the right thing That's to not say. That's accurate because they're not right. looking it at might your, not be the right thing your to say. energy right. costs, whether you're natural gas or oil. It's, it's right. creating a, a profile and then getting yeah. into, into solutions. So I do want to say, feel free to email me suggestions afterwards. So again, just send them to me, but. At the moment, I think what I'm going to say is to, uh, for this piece, um, analyze, okay, I'm going to just, I'm going to say, I'm going to take a note to um, simplify. Um, simplify this and, um, you know, try to touch upon someone's emotions uh, as opposed to their analytic piece. Is, is what I'm kind of thinking of. But I'm not sure how to do that. So yeah. analyze how much you're spending on energy and help and offer you savings potential or something. You can also determine high energy savings potential. It's kind of gobbledygook to good to right. someone who's reading whatever this is, is. This is why I put this in front of the commission. This is really, it's so good. It brings against people who don't think about this every single Analyze day. Analyze energy use and identify opportunities for better numbers. But speak to the person so identify ways you can right. save, save or something. Can, yeah. Yeah, that's Scott had a number of um, uh, little detailed things, uh, which I'll, I'll go through and look at. He's not here to check them out himself. But the one key thing that we had identified on the landing page, I'm moving on to the landing page unless someone has, uh, has more on the postcards at the moment. But So the one thing that we, uh, everybody kind of came up with that I, that I got out of um, the last presentation was that this should be um, really clear and to the point, you know, uh, and I think they um, receive a $10 gift card when you upload recent utility bills, so it, it, it tells you, you know, what you need to do to get your gift card. Um, and then 
Um, the other piece was either really precisely say what this is about um, or point to another page that has a description of this. So th their attempt is a, uh, they added this about piece. And uh, um, if people don't see it online, I'll, I'll read it. Northampton Single Family Home Characterization Study. The city of Northampton has partnered with Enerscore to help the city obtain a clear understanding of the overall energy consumption of the community. Your utility records will help the city analyze home performance and identify savings opportunities. Participation is voluntary, though households who, uh, though households who participate will receive a $10 Amazon gift certificate while supplies last. This data will not be published. It is only intended for enhancement of this analysis. Yeah, it's a little wordy, isn't it? <laughs> but, but still. But it's not going to be published as part of their own site? Or are they just not going to do it as a bill? They're going to still use it? They're certainly not going to publish the bills. Um, uh, just make sure that the household. This data will not be published. So their data will not be published. Um, their analysis, I mean, I guess Enerscore might have that up on their page, but that's not the same. Right. What do they mean by this data? This data, right. I think they're talking about their tail. Are you anonymous? They're not going to link it with your name with a bundle or whatever. I don't want to be misleading, but they are going to be creating a list of all the homes in town that says they're estimated how efficient they are. Yes, yes, we will. Um, but is that what they mean by this data? That's the, I mean, that, indirectly, they're using their analysis of the data on a property by property basis. I'm fine saying nothing, but I'm not fine saying okay. that they're not going to do it, and someone's going to feel like they're being cheated. Okay, so, um, and it's probably not necessary to have that line in there. Right, to either drop the line or do a fuller disclosure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, do they just mean it will be published outside of their organization? Right. Um, I think drop, I think I would suggest just drop the line. Yeah, somebody else. Is this landing page? The other thing is oh, there's quite yeah. a lot at the yeah. bottom of the landing page that kind of leads you, you, you know, Where in other directions. Explain. Mm -hmm. Like what? Oh, right. Um, you mean all this, how it works in the back? Right, which has a lot to do with their stuff. Um, um, it's on the top of the page too, right? Their navigation. Yes, how it works back um, add to your site. And, and I'm actually okay with all of that myself. Um, I don't know if anybody else um, differed from it. I thought what was missing was a description of what we were doing. But I, I was totally fine with that being part of it. I actually thought that actually added to it because Right. You know, we might have contracts and stuff yeah, exactly. that could yeah. somehow yeah. partner it here and enhance yeah. the underscore site if they're willing to. This will go live. I thought it was fine to let that be. Uh, so, so, Chris, the link you sent us is not where you're reading from. We're trying to work here. Oh, really? It's a different. Well, I, I don't. Let me take a look. The landing page you sent us is this. Oh, no. That's fine. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, that's that's it. Keeps so going where down. are you reading? Keeps going down. Yeah. Yeah, there's some that's why it's great. There's a typo right here. Participation if voluntary it says should be is. Okay. <laughs> but that's what you just read? Yes, that is what I just read. There's some hers thresholds. No, wait a minute. Oh yes, it is. Yeah. Some of the feedback I gave them, I, I told them that at, at our energy commission meeting, some of the commissioners looked up their homes and knew their energy scores were wrong. <laughs> they said, no, we don't want to do that. So they basically, basically have taken out any link to their scoring system. Okay, so you, you can no longer go off and find your house, um, which, is, which, which was never what I intended for. I mean, they can do that on their own if they want. But not as you know, not, I don't want that as part of the project because that's for us to use for internal analysis. And it seems like their their response to that was just to take out any link to it. And the postcards are being sent in a totally randomized fashion to homes. 
Um, I have to check with them. Um, I don't know how they're going to get it. Because that was also the question that when there was no scoring for a whole part of the city, I was wondering if that means they won't be sending out postcards to that part of the city. Well, if their scoring was, if there was a part of the city that was missing in their scoring, that shouldn't be the case. It should cover all the single family residential buildings in North Hampton. Um, and the data set that we were pointed to wasn't finished for us either. Oh, okay. um, they still hadn't, they, they still haven't gotten us a final data set. So I'm really hoping that once it is finished, they send us a link that can send it out. You guys can look up your houses and they will be correct. <laughs> because, uh, um, or at least they'll be correct if the building department has data that they've been updated and they, you know, if, they, if the building department has a hers rating, their database should have the fact that that's got a hers rating on it. So that's how they took care of that. And I actually thought that was a really good change as well, that they just removed the link to um, their scoring sheets. So um, does anybody else want, want to read this? Read, you know, instead of me reading it out loud, pass, pass this around? Or are we getting close to the end of the comments and people can send me emails? Send more comments if need be. Um, it was both helpful for me to hear things last time and to receive emails afterwards. They were both, uh, and quite frankly, I think things were improved a lot by us doing that. Um, in my life. Um, okay, I'm actually going to jump to the last item just because it can be done pretty quick. Status report on the landfill. Um, Amoresco has uh, now received National Grid's interconnection study, and that gives a price. It's going to cost. Um, it's going to cost them uh, seven, over seven hundred seventy thousand dollars to do the uh, uh, to do the study. Um, we always knew that this, the study was going to come in at a higher price. Um, we're kind of glad it didn't come at come in at something like two million dollars, which could have been the case. Um, that said, this isn't pennies, and so um, it um, and we knew that the cost change through a formula that was based in the contract would then adjust our purchase price for the net metering credits that that, the, that it generates. So the original net metering credits we were going to buy at around five and a half cents a kilowatt hour, um, which is incredibly. What's the market? What are we paying right now? What's that? Just for comparison, what's the market? Are we using what we So what that would be is um, the um, right now uh, a, a renewable energy or, or a, a net metering credit is um, is based on National Grid's G1 base rate, which is roughly 16 cents a kilowatt hour right now. So we would be paying at that point we would have been paying about six and a half cents for a coupon that we could then use to buy 16 cents worth of power, which was pretty right. amazingly good savings. Um, uh, well, with, with this work in, the price has now gone up to just a little under 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, to put that in comparison, if you were to go out and purchase net metering from any other array out there, most of them, they will give you a percent discount of some kind, so that no matter what the price does, going into the future, you will get a percentage off of that. And, and yet they'll put a floor to that price so that if the price really plummets, their price won't go low a certain floor. That floor is almost always at around eight or nine cents. So this is a price that won't change for 20 years. It won't go up and down with the price. It just won't change. 
uh, for 20 years. And it's right around where the floor of anybody else's price is. So that, to me, that says we are still a really sweet deal here for Northampton. Um, uh, so based on that, um, uh, we've said yes, and we're now waiting for a contract amendment to work this in. Um, uh, and then, you know, lawyers review it and stuff like that. So uh, in short, the project has um, become more clear because of this step. Um, uh, it's still on track to keep going. And the only thing that could hold it up at this point would be the work that that $770,000 uh, is meant to cover is stuff that this national grid probably has to do a lot of it. Um, we probably have to be, uh, or the NRS will have to do some of it. And it just has to happen fast enough. But this is just work. This isn't a study that could result in it's impossible to do right. this. Right, exactly. This, this study was the one thing that could have said to us, you can't do the project. We now know that's not the case. Correct. It can be done. It just needs to have, I don't know what it is. I haven't looked at it. You know, there's certain transformers that have to be upgraded or, you know. Um, the grid has to be modified so that it can handle the power coming off off the off the, off the array um, so that's all together in my mind that's good news all together it's it, it's not as it's not perfectly good news because it does raise the price but um, it's not it doesn't raise it way out of the ballpark Chris do you have a sense um, some of us will look at the old Willard pit on Glendale Road just south of us I mean lots of people have been looking at it but one person looked at it and was looking to the solar array there does this mean we're using up whatever excess capacity there is and that project couldn't possibly happen? Is that not so true? Um, we're using up the capacity that the city has to have net meter um, credits. And we're actually also looking at a, another third party net metering. There's two projects out there. They both want to sell us at a percentage off price that will use up some more of our uh, net meter capacity. I wasn't so much asking the net meter capacity, but the, the power lines on Glendale Road. Oh, uh, that's a national. That would be a national grid. Um, yeah, it might. I couldn't tell you. Right, right. Did they do anything when they did the generator at the at the landfill? They probably had to. They, they may have had to do something for interconnection. I think it's a lot lower, a lot lower power outage. So, um, but the, but they might have. And this is really standard the interconnection for large arrays and stuff after the future. That's the one I first time might. All right, so that's the status report, unless anybody else has more questions. And then the last item, we are ripping through here. This is wonderful in August. <laughs> um, um, uh, the last question, or last item, um, is the National Grid Community Initiative Grant Program. So I did send information out. I don't know, how, how many people had a chance to actually look at some of this? Christina? Louis? Okay. So most people didn't. Um, it's an odd setup. It's not a grant where we give you the money and you do something and then you get, you know, you get to reimburse you for the grant. Um, you get a lot of support from National Grid. Uh, you're partnering with them, so things such as um, monthly information on energy use for the community sounds like it's possible um, through here. So that's something that, you know, we, we actually like to, like to have it. Um, um, and yet what you're doing is you are you have to agree to certain goals that you're going to aim for and there's a certain minimum goal that you have to reach before you get the money at the same time there's some initial upfront payment that you get so I assume once you get that you don't have to give it back um, and then there's um, you know interim payments in between but it basically means you know you can't use the city can't use this grant to say pay staff time for this because we won't have we won't we, it's not guaranteed we don't know if we have it so, so it's going to be kind of it's going to be kind of hard to understand how this works but one thing that crossed my mind is uh, I mean, there might be two ways to do this is that it may be that the city if there's expenses that we need to cover for this um, it may be that we use the energy revolving funds to cover it, um, thinking that we will, as, if we reach our goal, we will then pay the fund back with the grants. That might be one way to go about it. Another way might be to do that along with 
instead of having the city staff do this, because we can't actually, you can't use the energy revolving fund, we can't use that for city staff. Um, um, but put it this way. By law, I know we can't use that fund for city staff unless it covers every cost for city staff. So it has to cover insurance and um, medical vacation. It has to carry cover. It has to be very broadly. It can't just be salary. Um, um, uh, so it, it could be that we have the opportunity to actually go out and hire someone like CDT to run a program for us. Um, uh, again, using the revolving funds to pay them, expecting to get it refunded with the, with the national grid somehow. So this is still really unclear to me. It seems it's a very odd grant set up. Um, and I'm not positive we'll be able to do something with this. But it strikes me as the opportunity, particularly since we're about to have the energy, energy score project just finished, and hopefully we're going to be able to identify, start identifying specific outreach opportunities. And it strikes me as this might be a way to bring some funding in to help us implement some real basic beginning um, piece going in. Louie, you, you've read it over. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a couple of questions that came to mind is, um, I, I couldn't exactly get what the goals are, what goals we no, have they, to achieve. They didn't have to yet. get it. <laughs> yeah. so, so if it's if it's energy independent Northampton, we're probably not going to get there. Right. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, and I, I think I think the answer is yes. But is it national grid staff that's we're going to be dealing with, or have they picked a third party vendor? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. When, when we follow up with them more. This says the objective of the initiative is to leverage existing community networks yeah. to increase awareness and measurable participa participation. So it doesn't sound like they're hiring a third party vendor. It sounds like we're using. Yeah, I think what Louis was saying is that there's certain, um, uh, there's certain support the National Grid's going to just be providing here. Is that going to be done by National Grid staff? Or is that going to be done by a third party vendor, right? That's, I think, it, is that what you were? Yeah, and, yeah. A, and a third party vendor who wants, you know, more than they're going to give. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think that was my concern, all the metrics, and then all the tracking, like you said, I think that's going to be a full-time job for it someone else, for multiple people. And then they mentioned using some of the money for, they least used LED street lights as an example. Right. Could we apply some of that to a project we already have? Yeah. Know? You know, so it's like, how can we use it? But right. I agree with your inner score assessment. But I'm just not sure. It sounds right. like a lot of not knowing, you know, what those goals are going to be, and how can we hit it with all the work that we've already done? I guess oh. opposed to a town that hasn't done any sort of any initiatives, you know, to get people involved. But right. From a from a municipal point municipal point of view, we actually haven't really done that much to help our residents um, uh, jumpstart energy savings. Um, I think Northampton might be farther along than many other communities just because of who lives here. Um, uh, but I don't, uh, we haven't really had an opportunity to do that. That's, that's a large part of why we're doing the energy underscore thing, is to give us the information so that we stop throwing darts at the wall, which is the way it's always felt in the past. Chris, the, the home energy assessments, this is basically man <coughs> save or is that yeah. deeper than that? That would be passive. And that's another question for me, is that, okay, I'd be fine with giving them that, you know, helping people get mass safe assessments, as long as it doesn't preclude us bringing in someone to give them a deeper assessment uh, as well, you know, so. Um. I feel like the same conversations we've been having for years. <laughs> <laughs> like the same kind of utility effort to like bolster their numbers at key times in the year without a lot of structure and clear, clear program design, and just like, on repeat. Well, the difference here, Aiden, that I see is that they're asking us for a proposal. Right. They're not saying, here's what we want you to join us on. They're asking us to give them a proposal. So I don't know how much elbow room we'll have for that, but in that case, we might be able to set something out and say, this is what we would like to do. We want to partner with you on that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of resources to do that. Yeah. Um, so there's really no decision here. I just wanted to, you know, really bring this up. And um, uh, if you guys have it, you can, you can, 
you can read through them. Um, uh, the timeline is, I, we would need to have a statement of interest in by the 1st of September. I'm not sure what that's going to entail, but it can't be much. Um, and I'm just going to assume that I put a statement of interest in just because that doesn't commit us. Um, and then, and then they're going to, um, they will then send an invitation to apply issued with community specific goals. So it'd be right at the beginning of September that we would actually see what these specific goals are that they want us to meet. So they're not even mentioning that yet. Um, then there's a whole bunch of time for questions from the communities and proposals would have to be due <coughs> by the 1st of November. Um, and um, work would start in uh, January 1st. Oh, they would have a mandatory orientation and training sometime in December. Um, so I guess to be, you know, I'll, let you, I'll keep you guys informed on what else I find out. But yeah, Mike, that is, this is great. I and mean, I agree with Aiden, we'd like it to be a lot deeper when we can the conversation. But that said, Sure, majority of people in pre order two homes have not done yeah. anything, so there's still a lot of opportunity out there. Right, right. Yeah. I think if, if you remember ahead of us, a, a good approach would be leveraging companies involved in the mass save system already, having them I'm thinking of even like a, a marketing effort that's that I've heard some contractors talk to the right brainstorm with them them combining their marketing resources, taking out like a half page ad to drive people in a mass safe through them. But that would that would be that would ease the city's resources how nice. to put into this. Yeah. So I was, we can talk about that. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that could be like using community networks, you know, our mm -hmm. networks with our local installers. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Sure. So, if anybody has any ideas like that, you know, you know, even before you hear any more, feel free to pass them my way. Um, I'll start basically putting together kind of a bag of ideas that we can kind of draw on when we start once we start coming up with a more detailed proposal. Anything else? I think we're done. <laughs> Move to adjourn. What's that? Move to adjourn. <laughs> yes. All in favor? Second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Carolyn's available.